Hi guys, it's Josh Wolf from MagicCraft.io and today I'm going to show you how to make a ScriptCraft Minecraft plugin using our ScriptCraft modular architecture that we've built. So you can write your own Minecraft plugins uh, on your computer and run them, play them, use them with your friends, have fun with them. So first I'm going to show you a few of the things you need to get installed on your machine to be able to do this. So you've got to get Docker which you can get from docker.com. I'll put the links in the description. You need to get Node.js from nodejs.org. I recommend that you get Portainer from portainer.io to control your containers. And you're going to need a Minecraft client, either the Java edition if you're going to do like a desktop kind of thing, uh, or you can get the Minecraft Pocket edition from the Google Play Store. And this one here for development, you can run it on your Linux, Windows, or Mac machine by using this MCP launcher. And lastly, Visual Studio Code from code.visualstudio.com. Okay, let's get started. Once you've got all those things on your machine, you're going to run npm i minus g, and you're going to install four packages, yo, generator SMA plugin, TypeScript, and Smack. So the minus g means that you're installing them globally for all of your projects rather than just the one that you're working on now. So I'll hit enter on that. It's going to take it a you know, a couple of minutes, probably less, um, can be anywhere between seconds and minutes to download these packages from the internet onto your machine. And depends on the speed of your internet connection, how long it takes, really. I'm on my phone right here, and it's been raining, which makes it go a bit slower, so I'm not sure how long this is going to take, but it shouldn't take too long. So these are all packages that other people have written. They're um, available through NPM and on github.com and we get to use their code that's the beauty of open source. Okay, it's all down. Now that it's down, you just run yo sma plugin, sma-plugin, hit enter, and the generator is going to come up. Welcome to the ScriptCraft SMA plugin generator by magiccraft.io, your package name. So here's where you give it a name. I'm going to call it my cool plugin. Enter. Now it's going to create this project for me. It's going to build all the files and everything, the structure, and it's going to put a readme file in there with instructions on how to proceed next. So it's installing some more packages, a few more packages. This is the last package install, and we're done. Congratulations, your new plugin has been created in the directory MyCool plugin. Remember to start the TypeScript transpiler in that directory with the command tsc-w. Check the readme file in the MyCool plugin directory for instructions to start a development server and test your plugin. So if I go cd MyCool plugin, and then I can go code space dot, and it's going to open Visual Studio Code with the project. Awesome. So now what I can do is I can click on the readme file here in the left, and up comes the readme file and then with this little button up here in the corner I can click that and I got a preview of the readme so I can read it nicely. Okay, my cool plugin, this is a Minecraft plugin written for the ScriptCraft modular architecture. Building, install the TypeScript compiler, npmi-g TypeScript, we did that, start the TypeScript compiler. Two different ways, TSC or in watch mode to recompile and file save, TSC-w. So I can go terminal, new terminal, creates a new terminal down the bottom and I can just type in TSC minus W starts the TypeScript compiler in watch mode great now what I can do is I can click here and get another terminal so I got two of them side by side this one smaller that one bigger running a development server you can start a development server and test your code using smack the script craft modular architecture controller I should say Make sure you have Docker installed on your computer. Install Smack globally. We did that. Uh, start a bucket server. So we're going to start a bucket server. Smack start. So I just go Smack start. Looks like I had one running already and stopped it. Okay, removing stopped container. So Smack start. Here we go. So it constructs the command to build the container. It's starting up. You can see it's a Minecraft server that's starting. So the first part of the loading of it, it takes a little while to load the first time. It's, uh, you know, it, actually when you run it for the first time, it's going to pull the Docker container out of Docker Hub. So it'll take a little while to pull that down. Then it will go to this phase where the Minecraft server is starting. So you can see the messages that are coming from, from the Minecraft server and from the different plugins that we have installed in the server. 
So we got like a, a server image that's like an appliance and if you build your plugin to run on, on Smack then anyone who has Smack can run it. So you can make mini games that you can share. You could even host a server if you wanted to do that. Okay, we're up to the script craft part here. So Scriptcraft is an open source library for writing Minecraft plugins in JavaScript and we've built all of our infrastructure on top of that. Okay, so it's loading a bunch of stuff. Now well, we're nearly there. Mm -mm. Just checking all the packages that are installed. Woo! There's a lot of them. Loading complete. Okay. Now we're going to connect to that server using the Minecraft client, which I have open here. So this is the Java Minecraft client. It's a bucket server. This is the desktop edition. So uh, direct connect, multiplayer. Now I type in 127.0.0.1. That's the address of this machine that I'm on, and it's the same for every machine in the world. Your machine has the network address 127.0.0.1, but that's only the address uh, on the machine itself. So other people can't connect to your machine through that address, but for development, that's how you connect to yourself. Join server. I'm logging in. You can see down the bottom here it said that I'm connecting, joining the world. There you go. Hi Cedar Putty, that's my Minecraft name. The My Cool Plugin plugin is loaded on the server. Also, uh, you see I just got op on the server, so part of the development profile is uh, a plugin called op all, which just ops anyone who joins the server. It makes it easier for you to, to do your dev work on it. So if we have a look at the code for the plugin, let's have a look in here. Um, there's this directory here called auto load. Now anything that you put in the auto load directory will automatically be loaded when your plugin loads in the server. And if we have a look at index.ts, we can see what's in there. Let's move this out of the way. So there's a couple of things in here. There's a logger, so you can log out messages into the console here. And if we scroll up, we'll see something logged out from there. Mm. I'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, so you got a logger, and you here you've got a player join event. So this is code that gets executed every time someone joins the server. And so that's how we're printing out that message. Hi, player.name, the Michael plugin plugin is loaded on the server. And then we also have shown you here how to create a new command in Minecraft. So this is a test command. Now you can see that the, oh, it's not calling the logger. We'll switch it to the logger in a second as a demo, but let's run the test command and see what happens. Test. Test command called. See here? Test command called. That echoes out to the player. And console.log test command called by player name. So you see down here, test command called by Cetapati. Now, at the top here, I said that we'd imported this logger. So what we'll do is we'll change this console log to the log command, and then I'll save that. And then what happens here is this recompiles the code, and now we need to refresh the code in the server. So I'm going to go ahead and type ts space refresh. Open and close parentheses, and then hit enter. Now this causes all the JavaScript code to be reloaded. So what will happen now is that my, when I use that test command, it's going to, instead of using console.log, it's now going to use that logger that we, we just created. So if I go test, now the difference between console.log and the logger is that you see here, I got the same thing, test command called by Cedarparty, but this log here, prints the name of the file where the message was logged out from. That's really useful when you want to figure out what's going on with your code and where it's happening. Scriptcraft plugins, Michael plugin, autoload, index.js. So it gets transpiled to JS and that's what gets executed. So there you go, you got like a, a basic kind of plugin. Um, let me show you another couple of things while we're here. So I can go TS space on and it puts it into TypeScript mode and now I can execute TypeScript directly uh, at the server console. So I can do something like const for a constant utils equals require utils. It's pretty easy to get started with this but to learn how to do all this other stuff you know you'll have to watch some more videos about that. But if we go utils.player so I want to, what happens if I do utils.players? 
Oh, there you go. Gives me all the players on the server. If I go utils dot player and then my name, my Minecraft username, it gives me back me the player there. And so I can do something like set food level and I can set my food level to two. So let's bring back the here. So if you have a look back to the game, if you have a look at my food bar, it's completely full right now. And that's 20. If I set the food level to two, go back, there it is, it's gone down to two. And then I can set it back to 20 again. Full. So let's create a command that will do that, hey? So if I say commando, and then what are we gonna call it? Uh, eight, we'll call it eight, right? And then so I just copy the one above, args, comma, player, this kind of arrow thing. It's an equals and a greater than sign. Now if I now go, I'm gonna to need to get the utils um, library in here. So if I go import, we'll do it the same way, const utils equals require utils. Don't worry if you don't follow all of this, I just want to give you a sense of how easy it is to do this. Player. Oh no, actually, I don't even need to do that because the player comes in as a player. So we can get rid of that. No need. So just go player, set food level, 20. So that's 8. And then if I make another one called fast, not fast like speed, but fast like fasting, player man listen to those fans it sounds like my machine's going to take off it's the java desktop client one of the reasons why we also support mobile because it doesn't hammer your battery so hard plus everyone's got an ipad these days fast set food level to two save that and then go back here now i just type in refresh i don't need to type in the ts because i'm in ts mode refresh open parentheses close parentheses enter it's going to refresh the plugin uh, I'm going to speed that up so it doesn't take so long to go through all this stuff. Then, okay, so now if I run my new command fast, down to two. And then if I say eat, think, there you go. See how easy it is to create like uh, Minecraft plugins with this thing. So now we're going to try something else. We're going to go back to the server console. I'm going to say smack stop. This is this is real experimental now because I haven't even I haven't tried this so hopefully this is going to work but I'm going to start it with the mobile version and we're going to run the same plugin uh, with a mobile profile so if I say smack start minus f and then smack dash nucket.json so there are two files here there's smack.json that's a bucket server uh, profile and smack nucket.json which is for the mobile version so I'm going to start the mobile server let's see if this works. I've got the bedrock launcher over here, so I'm going to hit play. You can see the server starting up here in the background. And I've got my Minecraft client starting. Oh, now it's really going nuts. Let's close this one. Bye! Okay, play. Servers. Okay, so you have to actually add a server here. But you just do the same thing. Server name, whatever you want. Localhost. Server address, 127.0.0.1. And then the port is 19132. Save. Okay. Um, let's click it. See what happens. Connecting to external server. So you can see here I'm joining the server. It's generating a world. Hopefully it's not going to put me in the middle of the water. Ta-da! Okay, I'm on, and I just got op on the server. Okay, let's see if these custom commands work, okay? So, test. Test command call, you can see it up the top there. Now let's try doing the eat uh, fast. So first we'll do fast. There we go, food level down to two. And then if I do slash eat, 
back up to the top again to 20. So you can see that you can write plugins using the Scriptcraft modular architecture that can run on both mobile and on desktop. That was something that was real important for us to be able to target both of those platforms and we provide a Docker appliance image for both servers so you can test your code against both. So one last thing that I will show you about testing your code is this. So if I go smack stop here, now there are unit tests in this double underscore tests double underscore folder and they're written in TypeScript test.spec.ts and um, you know you got your auto loaded code but you can also write plugins that are used by other plugins in which case you would expose things uh, through this lib index.ts so where the, the export for the, for the uh, module is so what I can do is I can go smack start and I'm going to start it in test mode so I go minus T and then minus E because I want the container to exit once it runs the test so it's not going to run anything in auto load it's just going to load up the plugin and then it's going to run the tests from test.spec. So this test here just tests that it exports something called something and that when it calls that something, which is a function, it's going to get back hello, which you can see in not autoload, but lib.index. You can see that here. It exports a function, something that returns a string hello. And then the test is just testing that 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 happens. So smack start minus T minus E, I hit enter. It's going to have to reboot the container. Um, I, I oftentimes will run it without the minus E because you know if I'm if, if the test fail then I want to try fixing something and rerunning the tests. So I'll run it without minus E, leave the server running and then just use refresh to rerun the tests again. Uh, but yeah unit tests are a really good way to, to write with your code because then when you change things you can make sure that everything still works because oftentimes you like build all this code and stuff and you change one little thing over here and it breaks something over here but if you have tests running over all of it then you can detect it before it uh, gets out there into the wild okay so the server is still coming up and then it's enabling script craft and it's going to do this big kind of loading thing it's loading all of the node modules right now, so I'll, I'll pare that down so it's only loading the ones that you need it to load. Mm -mm. So we'll give it a second to start. It's kind of like the old days of waiting for your code to compile. Not this one. Uh, double click here. Boom. Okay. Uh, here it comes. Took a while to get the uh, unit testing working, but it is totally worth it because it's just saves so much time having unit tests. They're a little bit, you know, it takes, it's more code that you've got to write, but it just gives you more safety, more security, and um, it really reduces the amount of rework that you have to do. Waiting five seconds, starting the test suite. It's running the tests. Uh -uh -uh. And one of the tests has failed. So the My Cool Plugin tests have passed but the um, this multi-world test has failed uh, that's that's one of the that's the magic craft core plugin which is included in here so that's something that we're working on at the moment which is where the world format has changed between desktop and mobile so you can't share you can share this code between them but if you build a mini game that relies on a particular world and a lot of mini games do right like our mini game Minecraft for type 1 diabetes has things like arrows that shoot out of walls and fireballs and that kind of stuff and they really rely on the world and where things are in the world so that's something that we're at work on at the moment is getting them to work on both but you can see that the tests have run my plugin was good but one of them failed here if I now down here go echo dollar question mark uh, yeah that's not the right process exit code it should have exited with one because the test failed but yeah anyway you have to read it you can see here tests so there you go that's how easy it is to build a plugin using the scriptcraft modular architecture that runs on both mobile and desktop and you've got a couple of servers with profiles here you know you can poke around get to know how they work change things up and you can run those games on your local machine and you can even have other people connect to them and you can share them through GitHub. That's the Scriptcraft modular architecture. So 
I'm going to do some more videos showing you how to do different things. You know, I showed you how to change the food level, how to create a new command, and I'll do some more videos to show you how to create other things, new plugins, and you can go forth and create something amazing.